Good day everybody, welcome back. What we got here is a manifold off a E9 V8 Mac engine. Uh, this Mac is getting a full restoration, full ground up restoration. And when they've pulled the motor out, they've pulled the manifolds off. There's a groove in here, which is where a, what they call a firing ring goes. And that, when the, the next section goes on, um, that's what seals uh, the manifold. This one here has been welded up at some stage and they had a heap of that exhaust tape around it to sort of stop it blowing soot everywhere. What I've been asked to do is to try and machine the groove back in this one. Now, I don't know how I'm going to go. It's I've been staring at it for a couple of days now, wondering best way to go about it. I have got a couple of, an idea in my head that may work. The idea is, a big piece of angle on this end with a stem on it that I can put in the forejaw on the lathe. Use the tailstock chuck to hold on the center of this end and then come in with a parting tool or a grooving tool and machine the groove. The other theory I had was putting it in the rotary table like that, again with a piece of heavy angle, bolted to the rotary table, rotate this with a slitting saw, but I'm worried about vibration, it'd have to have a big heavy plate all the way up here, it's a lot more stuffing around. Now I am pretty concerned about if something does go wrong, go pear shaped then and wrecks and buggers this manifold ball. I have found there's one brand new one left in existence through Mac. The price is pretty well up there, but these are pretty much non-existent. There is a couple of second hand ones I found out about. Condition unknown, whether the, the guys want to part with them because they're, they're hard to get. Bit of a nervy one, this one, but this, this truck here, I actually drove back in the day. I'll put a photo up of it back when, it, yeah, back when I was working every day. So, beautiful old banger. It's going to look really good being fully restored from ground up. Anyway, I will probably off camera stuff around and build this bracket, this mount. Probably do that off camera because it's a bit of thinking got to go into it and you just don't want to sit there and watch me think. Hopefully we can get it all to happen and I can get the groove back in as close to depth as possible. It's going to be an interesting one this one. So this is what my theory is. Got a big piece of angle. Um, I have checked it for squareness and I had to put it in the press and just give it a tweak. But I want to pick up on the centre line of the opening on this end. Mark it along here. And then I'll probably bore a hole in the mill. And then put a stem in there. Like a, probably an inch diameter stem. Weld it. So then it's I can mount that in the four jaw and use that to centralise it. Like I say, use a tailstock chuck on that end to hold the internal. So that's my theory. I'm going to tap these holes half inch 13. The wife's just about to mow the lawn again. I ain't going to stop her. Okay, there. 
they're done. Just hope they line up on the manifold. Okay, I'll get this all broken down and I'll do a bit of a test fit off camera and see if everything's going to line up. I hope so. It's a bit of a setup, but I've got it aligned the best I can. I've spent a fair bit of time getting this lined up as good as it is on this surface here. Everything spins all right. But I'll throw the indicator up. It's the best I can get it considering this is a worn surface. I can't get it any better. I'll show you how good it, how, how, how I've got it anyway. Don't know if it's good or not, but yeah. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. As you can see, like if I move it over, it, it's surfaces as rough as hessian undies and it's the best I can get it so what I did do is put the inside jaws on this and just held it on the very outside of the, the flange I did hold it from the inside but there's too much variation in the casting didn't matter where I put it like Four jaw might have been a good idea, but I haven't got one to fit this tailstock. And there's one that fits the other tailstock. It's miles too big in the jaws to get it inside this hole. So I've had to settle with just gripping it on the edge. Um, yeah, and just be done with it. So, yeah, I'll probably spend a, a good, good hour and a bit, I suppose, getting it to there. But anyway, see how we go. According to the, the other manifold, from this face here, machine face, it's 16mm. The groove is 3mm wide, which this inserts 3mm. And that should leave us 9mm to the outer flange, to the, to the outside of this, which we have. Oh, here goes nothing. Vibration going on. Okay, there is a couple of hard spots. There's one there and one there. So the only option I've got is to cut it by hand, rotate it by hand. Unfortunately, the lathe doesn't spin slow enough to be able to you know, do it under power. Just it's it's too fast. So the slowest speed I can go here is 70 RPM, which is too fast for this setup. But never mind. We'll just have to do it by hand. I've set these dividers to the other manifold, and when they go down, then we're going to stop. We've got about another millimetre or half a mil depth to go, which is one mil overall.
that should be it. That there, I'm going to call it. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I can't believe I actually pulled that off. To be quite honest, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. Just got to check the width, double check it on the original, which could be worn a fraction too. But I'll just double check everything and go from there. Oh yeah, I've just been through and double check the width and everything. Everything's fine. I've just got to get a little file and break this edge while it's under power. That'll do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there while I'm in front. So I'm gonna break this setup down. There we have one manifold ready to go back on. Well, I am super excited that that setup worked. A bit is a bit of a shame I couldn't do it under power. You just have to spin the chuck by by hand, but being cast, it wasn't too bad. It was only them couple of hard spots. It's got me to thinking whether I convert that load to a three phase motor and put a VFD on it, so I can wind it right down for doing stuff like this because you never know I might have to do something similar one day again so this can go back to him now and can go back on the restoration uh, we don't have to worry about sourcing another one and it's got all its original working parts back on it that it was using when it when the truck was retired so which is a great thing hopefully you enjoyed that it was a bit of a quick video but it was sort of I didn't know how I was going to attack it but it worked anyway thanks for watching guys and see you on the next one Hooray.